It might be a crazy life. But it's our life. And so we went to a fertility doctor. Because I always wanted to be a mom. I always was holding somebody's baby. I might not even remember who the baby was. I was always babysitting. I was always gone. Welcome down the rabbit hole, friends. We're here today to talk about the allegedly diabolical nature of Kate Goslin. John, you need to take a break and help me clean. I just want to roll this off of here. Well, I'm doing this. Just can you wait five seconds? She just like snaps. I don't ever like the mess. Then Put get them down and you can continue in a minute. I'll just roll it towards you and you can have your spot. Just sit it down. Who knew? I didn't because I'm not ashamed to admit that I was a huge fan of John and Kate plus eight. Look, look at that big alligator. Tim got a big tail. I thought those kids were absolutely adorable, especially Aiden. What's your name? Norma. What's your name? I'm Aiden. Nice to meet you. With his little glasses. He was called the tiny professor. I always thought of him as a little inspector because he would go around constantly rambling on and on about like bugs and dinosaurs. And I just love that about that little guy. I also had a special place in my heart for tiny Hannah, who was known as the mother hen of the little kids. She was so sweet and she was always a big helper <laughs> to Kate. Poor Hannah. We're leaving for Disney World. Last Friday, I started packing. I saw her as being every mom's dream child in many ways. The kids were adorable. They caught my attention big time. I would love to just give them a hug and cuddle them. Um, but the main draw for the show was always going to be the relationship between John and Kate. That I need to be home. They're wearing their nice shoes. What did I tell you the other day? When we go away, they wear their... Nice shoes. I don't understand boring, why you ready. ask me. Who cares? I do. I why do you ask every time shoes. we go away? Which yeah. shoes are they wearing? Seemingly, Kate had major issues with control. I don't want to call it OCD because who knows if it really rises to that level. But she definitely offset her own anxiety by wanting to maintain everything exactly the way that it best worked for her. Hey Kate, when are you going to pull the stick out? Because it's getting a re really annoying. I didn't hold my tongue. I just said what I was on my mind. Most of us, when we become moms or parents of any kind, we must develop an ability to be flexible. Things that were possible in the past are no longer possible when we have even one child, let alone eight of them. We're done. I've been looking for you. Go to 11. Hello, I need your help. Go to 11. No, I can't. Would Why? you come here? Because you need to stop playing toys oh. and come help. We must learn to give and take with our partners in different ways and to give and take with our children as well. Not everything can be the way we want it to be. You stand here, Stop I have yelling. to go ahead. Right. Playing with toys instead of doing his job. And everyone looked and I got embarrassed. So I went up to the front and I stayed where she told me to stay. And then she went down to the aisle 14 or whatever it was and then started to check out. I cannot deny that we watch John Goslin deal with a lot of BS on this show, especially in the early season. So I'm standing with two carts in, you know, no man's land up in the aisle. She's down checking out the girl's stuff. I was stressed. I didn't I'm want playing them with to the see it. That's fine. I'm playing with the babies. And then I hear, Hello! We're over here. You told me to stay here. Come. Back then, in my heart, I defended Kate Goslin by being like, Yes, this is an overly stressed mom. Can you even imagine being a mom to eight kids, going through all the major hormonal changes that happen during pregnancy, but for six children at once? I can't even imagine. So I kind of justified to myself, like, even though she was sort of a B-I-T-C-H on the show, that maybe she had reason to be. This is for going pee potty. I'm not talking anymore. Look, this is for going pee potty. It's great. Okay, you need to pay attention. No, you need to stop it's yelling. Peaceful. Everyone looks at me again, like here's the whipping boy. <laughs> so I get, <laughs> I drag both cards down to them, and you know. And <sighs> Poor John. 
I mean, I told myself back then, like, maybe when they get through the toddlerhood of the six kids, things are going to get better for them. Like, their marriage will come back together. Kate will be less stressed. They'll all be less tired. I remember thinking, John must be so tired working a full-time job. At one point, he was. And then coming home and having to help Kate with all this crap around the house. For eight children, I said, like, maybe when the kids get a little bit older, things will be better. But we all know that wasn't the case. I guess she, you could tell she was like, I want to get stressed. out of here. No, I didn't want the girls to see what I got them. And Manny and Kara, we went to the mall. Honey, don't ramble. Like, say I'm it in rambling. five seconds. I'm sorry, I was Just say to... Manny and Kara had to get each other something, so we took just them. This is just a short introduction to everything we're going to be learning about, <laughs> well, specifically Kate Goslin, but about the family in general and everything that was going on behind the scenes. Um, and so there's so much more to talk about. We all know that John and Kate got divorced, and there's a lot that went on in the middle of all of that, and we will be going down that rabbit hole slowly but surely as we work through this amazingly awful book. Okay, but first let's take a minute to listen to what John Goslin had to say just a few years ago when he did an interview with Kate Casey from Reality Life with Kate Casey. I found it amazing how much he opened up to Kate about what his life had been like, how they got involved in the show. Um, this interview takes place like after he divorced Kate and the two of them were living separately. And if you listen to the entire interview, you should definitely check it out. You can tell that John is trying, trying to promote uh, this show that he's going to be appearing in. But in the beginning, he talks extensively about how they fell into getting a TLC show. I work, and Kate was like, they want to do a reality series about our family. And I was like, what's a reality series? Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, like it. it's like 2005, you know? So... There was no reality shows. There was like Big Brother, Real World. There was network shows, but no cable shows. So I was like, well, well we'll talk about because, you know, my job was very secure. I worked for the governor. Like, I'm not supposed to be a public figure. I'm in IT, all this stuff. And I didn't know what was going to happen, but it was still on Discovery Health at the time. Something interesting I didn't know about John is that before they gave birth to, before Kate gave birth to their six new little ones. Um, John worked in IT. He actually worked as part of the governor's office. He had a really good job and was making a pretty good income for their family. And it wasn't until after the kids were born that he ended up, he says, like losing the job um, and attributes it to like everything that was happening with ha needing to be home with the kids. Um, I think we're going to hear a little bit differently from some of the information in this book. Um, there's definitely some other perspectives <laughs> that disagree with John, and I'm sure Kate has a totally different perspective from all of them if she ever writes a book. But it's interesting to know that before the kids were born, John, you know, he kept their family financially independent, and Kate was working as a nurse as well. After the children were born, Kate left her job, stayed home full time with them, obviously. Um, she was in a hard situation when it comes to raising all these kids. And according to this book, they got an awful lot of help from their community, which we will dive into further a little bit later. So obviously we ended up doing it. The original show was called Multiple Mayhem. That was in our contract. And then we, then I said, I really don't like the title. If it's going to be our show, we should call it something, you know, that's clicky and everything. I said, how about Johnny K plus eight? And then like, they loved it. So that stuck that went in the contract um we filmed our first season well we filmed 20 episodes so what they did was they made it season 1a and 1b so they made it eight episodes in 1a and 12 in 1b which is technically season one and two and then after season two the ratings were through the roof they switched us to tlc it's still under the discovery umbrella but you go from a viewership of 17 million worldwide to 92 million worldwide. So, you know, um, we're like, this is huge. That's when things got crazy. And then their third season, we filmed 40 episodes. Um, I quit my job at the state and um, it just took off. It was crazy. Okay, then listening to this podcast from Kate Casey, I was like so surprised to hear that there was so much like overlapping <laughs> with the Duggar family as well. They actually shared some of the same like producers and cameramen and there's just a lot going on there with TLC and all the crossover. 
you know, last I heard my old cameraman, Scott, he's a producer now, but then he was the producer for the Duggars. So, because it was within the same production family. Mm-hmm. So it's like when all that crap went down, that ended. So, um, I don't know. I haven't really touched base. I don't really talk to people of my past. Yeah. Only, so, a lot of only people. select people like, like, the paparazzi guys that I actually develop friendship with, they're not even paparazzi. They're just like professional photographers. Yeah. Like I'm still really good friends with them. Yeah, this podcast interview was super interesting because for me, John comes off as someone who is like basically admitting like I made a lot of mistakes in my past. I went kind of crazy like right after Kate and I divorced, but I want to be like a better person now. I'm devoted to being a father. I want to be just like a normal person. But then he also will bring up things like I'm just really good friends with like these ex paparazzis that used to chase me around. So we all know that John has a lot of issues going on here as well. Although most of us, I think, tend to drift more towards like John was being <laughs> abused by this woman. Um, and I, this book really brings us to the idea that Kate had a plan in place. And that was something that never <laughs> occurred to me um, as a viewer, that there was a plan, um, a journey, a road that she was going to follow all along that uh, poor John was probably like very, duh, like had no idea what was going on. And that there was a lot of manipulation that was coming from this lady right here. The dedication of the book made me so sad to read. It goes like this. To Alexis, Leah, Hannah, Joel, Aiden, Colin, Kara, and Maddie. Remember that no matter what, you will always have each other. Stay close to one another. There is nothing more important than family. (laughs) It just killed me to read that. Um, The writer of this book is named Robert Hoffman. Okay, so the guy who wrote this book, his name is Robert Hoffman. And in the preface, we learned that he started working with John and Kate Plus 8 um, because he was like an art director who ended up losing his job and then coming to work with John and Kate on some of the stuff with their show. He says like he's not a professional writer, but he ended up starting to write this book while he was involved with them. Then during the writing, John and Kate ended up getting divorced and he thought the show was going to end like, okay, it's over. It's going to die down. And also that the kids would be taken off camera. Um, But when the show did not die and Kate Gosling kept pushing not only to save the show, but to go on all these interviews and do new shows, he decided that it was going to be worthwhile to write this book about the journals that he allegedly found in Kate Goslin's garbage can, um, which cataloged like everything that she had been doing over the past several years. A lot of her hopes, fears, dreams, ambitions, um, things that I'm surprised she would write down and then discard <laughs> into a trash can. Robert states that the main purpose in writing this book was to kind of reach out to the kids and let them know when they get older that people love them and care about them. They miss them because there's a lot of people in the book who are brought up as being like close with the family and then having fallouts, including Aunt Jody. One of the chapters is entitled, Where's Aunt Jody? And that's something I'm incredibly interested in. It's towards the back, so I can't wait to read it with you. Over the next several days, I'm going to be reading, trying to read a chapter a day and put out a video about it. I am so interested in this book. It is entitled, Kate Goslin, How She Fooled the World. Um, if you'd like to join me, you know, check out my videos, but you can also purchase the book on Amazon. You should also check out Kate Casey's podcast. It was pretty amazing. There's a lot going on with the Goslins right now, and that's something I'll interweave throughout the videos, um, as well as clips of what was going on in the backgrounds of the show. I can't wait to head down this rabbit hole with you. Join me tonight, Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to chat about this topic, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about what's going on with Amy Duggar, as well as some other issues I've been looking into recently. I'm so glad that you joined me here today. I hope to see you again soon as we head down our next rabbit hole.